All right, here we go with question number five. We've got a soccer field, and it talks about the soccer field at Tazem. You can read through it. I'm not going to read through the whole thing. That takes too long. But it does say that the long side runs east-west. Okay, and that that's 115 meters. And then the short side runs 70 meters, and that's north-south. So I'm going to just draw the whole field here. Lovely, beautiful, that's a great rectangle. Thank you, Mr. Bywater. All right, so now we've got, it says Assad is training for soccer and is doing sprints. He starts at the southwest corner, so that would be down here, and sprints along the southern side until he reaches the end. So he reaches, he goes, until he reaches the end, he turns and sprints up to the northeast corner. And then there's your northeast corner. He sprints the long side in 12 seconds. Okay, so 12 seconds over there. And the short side in 8.6 seconds. Assuming acceleration is instantaneous and velocity on each stretch is constant, find the distance to side travel. Now, obviously this is not a perfect scenario because it does take time to speed up and change direction, things like that. We're going to not assume that so that we have an easier question to work with. Okay, we'll deal with all those changing speeds and other things later. All right, so here we go. The distance Assad traveled. You should be able to just go through and say, well, it was 115 meters along the south side and 70 meters on the other side. And so I'm going to go ahead and add those together and I get 115 plus 70, which gives me 185 meters. So that's your first answer. Next is Assad's displacement. Now this one's going to be a little bit different because remember displacement is the change in your position. So it goes from here to here. It goes from this position up to that position. All right. Now there's a couple of things we have to get here, right? Because displacement is a vector, we need a direction and we need a magnitude. All right. So we go ahead and we're going to find the magnitude first. Because this was directly east and then running up north, we know this is a right angle, so we should be able to find that missing side. We're going to go a squared plus b squared equals c squared, all right? Uh, don't just add the 115 and the 70 together. We already did that for the distance, but the displacement, we need to go 115 squared plus 70 squared equals our final displacement, which is a vector, squared. And so we should be able to solve for delta x, all right? Uh, go through and calculate that. I got that the displacement is about 135 meters. Now, that's just the magnitude, right? I need both a magnitude and a direction because displacement's a vector. So I need to get this angle right here uh, so that I have a direction for it as well. Okay, so for that, I'm actually going to use trig, right? We're going to go tangent because I have the opposite and the adjacent. So I'm going to go tangent of 70, uh, sorry, tangent of theta equals 70 opposite over adjacent, 115. So to solve that, I'm going to do the inverse tangent of both sides. And I get that theta is equal to about 31 Point three degrees. Lovely. So I say at 31.3 degrees because this is zero, right? And so that 31.3 is the angle at which I've rotated through. All right. So there's my displacement, 135 at 31.3. Yes, they are both necessary. Vector has magnitude and direction. So you got to remember to have both of them there. All right. Okay, that was letter B. On to letter C, his maximum instantaneous speed. All right, well, they gave us some information on this, right? They told us that he did the first 115 meters in 12 seconds. And so we know that speed is uh, distance over time. So I should be able to just take that 115 and divide by 12, which then would give me a speed of 9.5. 5, 8 meters per second. And then if I do the same thing for the one on the side, if I go 70 divided by 8.6 seconds, then I get a speed of 
8.14 meters per second. So the higher speed obviously is this one. So letter C is going to be 9.58 meters per second, right? Because it says that the speed is constant along each side, along each stretch, okay? So now we go on to letter D. Now letter D is his maximum instantaneous velocity. Now in the last video, I said that these two are basically the same thing. In fact, the number will always be the same. The only difference is that velocity has direction. So whatever the maximum instantaneous speed is, the maximum velocity will be the same. Instantaneous velocity, 9.58 meters per second. And I need a direction, and that is actually directly east, or at zero degrees, or east. Either one of those will work. You don't really want to use a positive or negative here because we have two dimensions, right? We're going side to side and up and down. And so the positive, it's not clear whether that's to the right or up or something else. So we don't really use a positive or negative in this scenario. You do need to either put an, an, an angle or in this situation, because we do know the northeast, southwest, you can just say east, directly east. All right. Uh, letter E is his average speed. Okay. So letter E, we're going to go for his average speed, which we talked about before. Average speed equals distance over time, which uh, the total distance, we added up the 115 and the 70. We did that in part A, right? And then the total time is 12 plus 8.6. So we should be able to add those together. And so we add together the 115 and the 70 and the 12 plus the 8.6 and we hopefully work that out. I'll let you work it out in your calculator, but you should get 8.74 meters per second. Now this, this number makes sense. We like to look at our numbers, make sure they make sense. Remember our fastest speed was 9.58, the slowest was 8.14, so the average should be somewhere in between those two, right? Uh, there's no resting here, there's no zero, so it should be somewhere in between those two, and that's what I got right there is the 8.74. All right, now the last question here is the average velocity, okay? Now, velocity, remember, is a vector, so we should have magnitude and direction. So the magnitude of average velocity is the total displacement divided by the total time. So the displacement is that change in x, that's what we found in b. Right, 135, so we go 135, and then we divide by the time, which we found in the last question, it was that 12.86, so 20.6, and if we do that, we go 135 divided by 20.6, we get a value of 6.55. All right, now that 6.55 has a direction. Right, The direction of your velocity is going to be the same direction as your displacement there. Okay, So don't get too confused. Sometimes students try to add the velocities together, but that's only, you only add velocity vectors together um, if each one is worth the same amount of time. Right, The velocity vector here on the bottom is worth 12 seconds, and that one is worth 8.6 seconds. So you can't just average the two. It doesn't work that way. The mathematics depends on how much time that velocity is being used, all right? So in this scenario, we're going to do the displacement over the time, and then the direction of my velocity, I should, if I'm going to get my average velocity, I need to head in this direction, which is the same as the direction of my displacement. So that's the at 31.3 degrees, all right? Now, what this means is that instead of sprinting along the south side and then sprinting upwards, if he wanted to accomplish the exact same thing, he could have just started at the beginning and walked across this way with a significantly slower speed, right? He could have done it at 6.55 meters per second at this angle, and he would have ended up in the same place at the same time as doing the sprints along the side, which took him longer. 
right? It took him 20.6 seconds, right? So in the same amount of time, he could go a much slower speed, 6.55 meters per second, if he went at the angle instead of going around the outside. And that's what the average velocity tells us. It says, well, instead of all of the path that he took, what, what would be the easiest, the straight from A to B way to do this? And how fast would, would I need to go in order to accomplish the same thing in the same amount of time? That's what the average velocity does. All right, so that's question number five. I hope that was helpful. And let's try another one.